to go. It is a beautiful day today, but there's not a cloud in the sky. So in terms of landscape photography, I don't think a lot's going to happen. So instead, I thought I would give you a walkthrough of the sort of equipment that I take in my bag when I go out and take a landscape image. Let's get started with the bag. Yeah. The bag I use is an F-stop Tapula. Tapula. It is an F-stop Tilopa. So the bag I use is an F-stop Tilopa. I've been using this bag for probably four years. It's just going to last forever. It stands up on its own, which is excellent. Uh, you lie it down on its stomach and you open it from behind, which is brilliant. Uh, you've got a whole bunch of pockets that you can access different things uh, from the top. And it's also got a pocket at the back there, which I stuff things in as well. It's very, very versatile. The thing I probably like about it the most is I can stuff it full of gear, as you're about to see, and I can stick it on my back and I can't feel much of the weight. Um, it's got fantastic shoulder straps, nice padding, lots of places to clip bits and pieces if I need to. Um, but more importantly, it's got a waist strap, again, with heaps of padding. So I'm distributing that weight across my back, not just on my shoulders, um, but it's across my hips as well. Let's open it up, see what's inside. Most of you will know that I shoot with a D800. I've been shooting with this uh, since it came out. It has lasted me years and years and years. It's a great tool. The sense is great. My vlogs are uh, captured with a Canon. And uh, some of you, if you've watched my video from a couple of weeks ago, know that I picked up a Fuji X-T2 recently as well. Uh, there's an updated version to this camera. It's the D810. It's the same sensor. Um, obviously the processor is upgraded uh, and there's a couple of other features, uh, but I felt that there was no need to upgrade. So this camera is just fine for my um, for my needs. Some of you may notice also that I've got the L bracket attached to the body also. This is a fairly recent purchase, but something that I found already very, very useful. Pretty much the purpose of the L bracket is that I can align my shot up and if I want to change the orientation of the shot from landscape to portrait, I just connect, I disconnect it from the tripod and connect it in uh, portrait mode. This means that I don't need to readjust the angle or the position. Um, it's a lot less fussing about. So it saves a lot of time, very, very versatile. This is a uh, very, very light uh, L bracket from Sunway Photo, great little purchase. On the camera is a 24 to 70 mil lens. This is a very versatile lens, uh, great for portraiture. Having said that, it's great for landscapes as well. Um, I've taken plenty of landscapes with this, uh, with this lens. 24 mil, um, it's great for seascapes. But typically for landscape or for seascapes, I will use this lens here, which is the 17 to 35 uh, f 2.8. I think there's a 16 to 35 that Nikon has come out uh, with, um, which is slightly cheaper than this. This suits my needs. I am able to capture the image that I want with this lens, so I'm very, very happy with it. The 16 to 35, I think, has is more plastic in the build, in the body. I'm happy with this lens. The other lens that I will typically use for landscapes is the 70 to 200 mil, again, f 2.8. This is also really handy, completely different style of landscape to those other two. Uh, this is when you want to use the telephoto lens to really compress uh, the foreground and the background. I will use this both on the tripod and handheld. Um, I used it uh, down at Esperance uh, in a recent trip that we did. Uh, check out the videos uh, for that. Um, fantastic for capturing waves. Um, it's got the vibration reduction on there. I typically turn it off uh, when I'm on a tripod, but turn it on when I'm um, hand holding the camera. Again, really good lens. It enables me to, to capture um, those shots. With the 
17 to 35, the 24 to 70, and then the 70 to 200. It allows me to capture from 17 to 200. I also have in my bag the two times tele converter uh, from Nikon, which takes this from 70 to 200 to 140 to 400. That's if I need to get that little bit of extra reach um, and I lose a stop or two in the uh, using the tele converter. If the light is, is strong enough, um, I really don't notice uh, much of a difference and I just adjust my other settings uh, to compensate for that loss in light. So that is my landscape lenses. I should mention that I've also got a 14 to 24 uh, Nikon, very, very wide angle, but I don't have the filters uh, and the filter mount for that lens. Uh, so I don't typically use it for a lot of landscapes. Um, I, only use, I only use it when I, uh, I don't need a polarizer or filters. Use that for more uh, astrophotography, um, which I haven't done a video about uh, as yet, um, but that's what that, that lens is for. So filters, filters. Filters are an important part of landscape uh, photography. I use them the majority of the time, trying to get the best image in camera. Uh, and then just doing adjustments in Lightroom or Photoshop. The filter system that I use is the Lee filter system. Um, so in here I have um, the mount, I have the adapter ring, I have a set of adapter rings so that I can mount the filter mount on uh, most of my lenses. On the front of the mount I've also got this uh, ring that allows me to screw on my uh, 105 mil landscape circular polarizer. Um, it screws into that um, circular adapter that you screw onto the, the side panels there on the mount. Without question, this is probably the most important filter to get. Uh, you could probably get away with uh, just using a polarizer uh, if you were into landscape photography. Uh, it's just that the other filters make it a little bit easier. What does the polarizer do? Well, if you've seen my, my uh, other videos, um, I use the polarizer most of the time. It takes the glare out of the water if you've got water in front of you or uh, glare from wet rocks or wet leaves. Um, so that's really good. It um, increases the clarity of clouds if you've got that. It's very handy to use a, a polarizer for that. It also makes so some of the colors are a little more punchier as well. Again, probably because you're just taking out uh, uh, the glare um, and uh, just cleaning up the light, I suppose, a little bit. So that's the polarizer and uh, it just screws onto the front of the mount. You'll notice on the front of the mount that there are two slots uh, and this is where I slot in these filters, which I've got in a handy little book here, also from Lee. I've got a, where's the other one? I've got a six stop, that's the little stopper, and I've got the big stopper here, which is the um, 10 stop uh, neutral density filter. Typically I'll use the six stop, the little filter, the little stopper, uh, around about that hour before uh, sunset. Um, or just a little bit after sunrise when the light is not too strong uh, but without it I wouldn't be able to have a slow shutter so that's fantastic for that the 10 stopper is more in the middle of the day when the the light is really really harsh and you want to slow the shutter down increase your exposure so you're getting either some uh, capturing some motion of the clouds or or the water so that's what the neutral density filters are for the other filters that I have uh, graduated filters. That's the 0.3. I'll grab the 0.9 because they're a little bit easier to pick up. So that's the 0.9 soft grad and I've also got a 0.9 hard grad. You can see the difference hopefully there. Which one do you have for which purpose? Well it really depends on the subject the background and more specifically the horizon. If you've got a flat horizon, an even horizon, uh, then it's the hard grad that you need to go for, the hard edge graduated filter. 
if your subject is more um, series of mountains, trees, um, a lineup of buildings, something like that, then you might want to consider getting a soft edge uh, graduated filter. Um, I've got both of these in 0 0.9, 0 0.6 and 0 0.3. So I've got six all together. I can double them up in the slots of the mount as well. So what's the purpose of the filters? Well, the filters are basically you're putting the dark side on the most brightest part of your image, which is typically in sunsets and sunrises, the sky. That allows you to increase your exposure, slow down the shutter, in other words, uh, and allows you to capture more light in the foreground where those shadows are, the details in the rocks or the waves or um, whatever the image you're, you're, you're trying to capture. So that's what they are very handy for. Anyway, that's the filters. And we'll also have a look at what else I've got here. Uh, this is my remote cable shutter. Um, I've been through a couple of cable shutters. Um, I find these really, really fantastic. They're just a generic uh, brand. What's fantastic about these is one, they're cheap. So if it's broken, you step on it, you drop it in the sea for about 15 bucks, you can replace it. It also doesn't have a battery. It plugs into the camera and uses the camera's battery, which means that I don't need to make sh constantly make sure that there's a, um, uh, the battery inside that, that, that's charged. There is no battery. Um, it's fairly simple to use. I've got a button that I press and that takes the shot. I can press and hold it down if I like, if I'm doing a, a timed shot. Um, if it's over a couple of seconds, then I can press and slide the little um, holder up there and that just keeps that button in place for say two or three minutes. Fantastic and as I said if it breaks you replace it. Now that I've got the camera and the lenses out of the the bag I just want to show you um, how this is kind of uh, made up. Uh, inside these uh, these f-stop bags you can uh, you get an ICU. Um, what does the ICU stand for? And they are internal camera unit. Right, inside these bags uh, you get an ICU, an internal camera unit. They come in different sizes. This is the largest, nice and padded. You can move these uh, compartments around. It's really fantastic. Not only that, you can buy these units separately. They actually pull completely out of the uh, bag with a little bit of effort they just come out like that I'll just move put that aside the advantage to that is uh, one if you're traveling and uh, you come up against a situation where you need to either put your camera gear into a smaller bag because they're not going to allow that that f-stop bag the the backpack um, as carry-on you can just take all of your your valuable lenses and camera bodies in here, put the lid up, zip it up and take that on as, as carry-on, which is good. The other advantage to this system is you can buy smaller um, ICUs that comes in medium and also small. That's handy if I'm going to go off for a, a hike and uh, a camping overnight and I don't want to take all of this equipment, I can take uh, this out, put a smaller one in, just put a body and maybe a lens or two uh, in the unit and then I've got the rest of the bag to be able to put all of my uh, cooking, camping, tent, uh, sleeping bag, stuff like that. So it actually makes it quite a versatile uh, bag. Okay, what's next? Tripod. This is a new tripod. This is the Enduro Stealth CLT. 204 with an Enduro BHL2S. For those of you who have followed me uh, for a while or have watched my videos, you may have noticed my tripod is a uh, Explorer 2 Series and I have had that for nearly 10 years. Unfortunately, um, it has succumbed to the constant sea water and, and salt water and spray that uh, I have made it go through. I'm now using it as my second tripod. So this is my main tripod. So I really haven't used it uh, too much, so I really can't tell you how good it is, but um, I've done a fair bit of research to, to come across this. 
ball head that will take well and truly the the camera plus the the 70 to 200 even with the teleconverter uh, so that's fantastic it's a series two the the body the legs are a series two as well as with my previous tripod it's got the the twist lock for the for the legs i prefer twist lock for the legs i find it just um, easier than the than the latches it's one of the most important pieces of equipment for a landscape photographer probably 90 95 percent of the shots that i take i'm, I'm sitting the camera on a tripod um, always better to be safe than uh, than sorry there's nothing worse than getting your shots back and then realizing that you've moved the camera and it's uh it's not as sharp as you as you'd like uh, the legs are a four-piece leg um, I know some photographers prefer uh, three-piece over four-piece. Um, the reason why I went, went for three-piece is that it is nice and compact, and I plan to travel with this tripod. Um, I don't particularly like travel tripods for landscape photography. I just don't think that they are sturdy enough. I just wanted something that I, was, um, that I could rely on, that was peace of mind, that packed up into a suitcase if I was to, to travel overseas or interstate. The times that I've used this so far, it has been absolutely brilliant. So I can't complain and uh, look forward to many more years with it. What else have I got? I've got these gear bags that, uh, well, first of all, I've got a little pouch here or wallet that I have my uh, spare uh, SD cards in um, quite handy and you don't want to run out of uh, SD cards this is quite a safe way of transporting them around and I've got these gear bags as well which will go over also if you're a landscape photographer in Australia you'll need sun cream during the day and the AeroGuard at night for the mozzies and the midges um, so that's always in my bag I've got some gaffer tape I don't know how many times this has saved my life, well not saved my life, but saved my trip. It rips and tears in bags and I just gaffered it up uh, because I wanted to keep, keep going, keep shooting. There's nothing worse than when your gear fails on you and you can't go on. Um, I've got a couple of other things here like um, uh, some Caribbean clips. I've also got a, a cloth here, in fact I've got a cloth in most of my little pouches and bags I've got lots of lots of uh, dry cloths microfiber to make sure that um, there's one at hand to clean the, the front of the lens from any dust spray um, dirt uh, the cleaner you can keep your the front of your lens the less work there is in post process to try and um, correct all of that next gear bag um, Got a towel in there to wipe off, uh, either to keep myself dry or the camera dry. Uh, that's quite handy. Another dry cloth for my microfiber cloth for the lens. Um, spare batteries, uh, snacks. Uh, nothing worse than being out on a shoot and you get hungry. So I've got some some snacks, trail mix. Um, I usually have a bottle of water with me as well. Spare batteries. A great little tip is to have a small and cheap um, shower cap. Um, these are fantastic, can be picked up quite easily from camping stores. It's got the elastic at the bottom and uh, the elastic helps uh, keep the shower cap over your camera and, and lens. Uh, really, really handy when you're setting up at the beach or um, in the river, you've got a waterfall or so you've got some spray from from those situations or it just starts to uh, a light shower or something like that when you're um, in the middle of middle of nowhere and you haven't got any any shelter you've set your camera up you've got the um, you've you've got your polarizer you've got a couple of filters on the front of your lens and so you can't put the lens cap back onto the front of the lens you put the shower cap over the whole lot and it keeps it nice and dry um, for those for those situations so uh, great little tip um, shower cap uh, the other thing that I've got here which is a fairly recent uh, purchase are these red whips from think tank um, so these are absolutely um, ingenious little little inventions uh, you could probably make these yourself um, 
but they are so cheap to purchase they're about 15 bucks for probably 10 of them um, so they're very very cheap um, I've got a couple of packets of these and I use them in a variety of different ways I help it helps me keep uh, things organized like uh, cables and stuff like that um, I use it to tie up cables say when I'm videotaping and I don't want a cable in the way I might do that I might hook it around a bag and hook it on the bottom of my uh, tripod yeah really really good if I need to put a microphone um, in a particular uh, location and, and tie it to a branch or a, a leg of a tripod or, or something like that uh, these come in very very handy red whips from think tank that's the gear that i typically need when i go out on a landscape trip uh, but when i travel either interstate or overseas um, as i will be in the coming months i need to have some sort of a travel workflow when it comes to looking after my images being able to view them just backing them up so what i'll do is i'll bring along my macbook 15 inch MacBook Pro and I also bring these hard drives along uh, with me as well. I typically use 16 and 32 gig SD drives. So I use smaller cards, um, swap them out more frequently and then we'll use the laptop to either have a look at them, check them and back them up more importantly onto external hard drives like this one. This is a Western Digital 1 gig external drive. The other thing I do is I've got this external uh, drive. This is not a hard drive though. This is an SSD drive. It's only 480 gig. It's the SanDisk Extreme 510. I will put video footage on there. Uh, and because of the speed of this little guy, I'm able to edit the footage on the Mac without using up the space on the SSD drive that I've got in there. I've only got 250 gig uh, drive on the laptop and this gives me an extra 480 gig. So these are really, really good. The only other thing to share with you is my latest purchase uh, and that is the Mavic Pro. I've had it for a, a couple of months now. It is my first drone. Um, I've been looking at drones for a while, wanting to add the footage to my video but couldn't justify the the extra weight uh, and the extra size. Um, I was looking at the Phantoms and they were just too big for the sort of thing that, that I do. I don't want to compromise on the, the camera equipment that I take. Uh, and so this fits the bill perfectly. Uh, it fits in its own pouch that then fits into the top part of the f-stop uh, bag. I have that along with the controller there and then I also have a couple of backup batteries as well. Along with that I have a recharging hub that recharges those three batteries at the same time. Uh, I'm really enjoying flying the uh, the Mavic. I find that the footage is really enhancing and, and giving a different perspective to, to the video and it is just a hell of a lot of fun as well. So uh, that is certainly now part of my part of my gear when I go out and shoot landscapes. The only other equipment that I take with me, of course, now that I'm taking videos, is this camera over here. This is the Canon uh, G7X Mark II. Before I had this guy, I had a GoPro Hero 3. After about half a dozen videos, um, I decided to upgrade to the uh, G7X. Uh, this is a great little uh, tool. It's nice and light and compact. Um, as you can see, I've got it attached to the 
Manfrotto Pixie tripod uh, and it sits on there quite nicely. Uh, I can set it up like that, which is excellent. I can extend the legs for a little bit more height, which is brilliant. I can then, with this little latch, set it down quite low, which is also uh, uh, quite helpful. That's when I'm setting it up for, um, for some footage, but if I'm holding it, if I'm carrying it around, which I quite often do, then I just use it um, almost like a selfie stick, if you like, uh, and just hold it and, um, and it's brilliant. It's got a little flip out screen, which is really important to make sure that uh, I'm in focus and in shot uh, and I can see what's happening in the background. Um, really, really nice. It's lasted um, a fair while. Um, I got it when it first came out and hopefully it'll last me a little bit longer as well. Um, so that's the, that's the camera that I take most of my footage on. While that captures the, the video, I capture audio with my lapel mic and I plug that into my iPhone. So my iPhone is a very helpful uh, piece of equipment as well. So the lapel mic is a Rode Plus uh, that works with uh, iPhone and it's got its own app which I use to record and adjust levels. I use my iPhone quite a bit when it comes to landscape photography for planning. Uh, so I use uh, Google Maps, um, I'll use different apps on there for taking images and, uh, and also apps on there for time lapse um, as I have the last couple of, of videos as well. So that is also very helpful. That's it. Uh, that is a run through of all the uh, landscape photography gear that I have in my bag when I go out on trips. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you want to know more about the equipment that I use, um, I will add a link to all of this equipment in the description below. These are affiliate links. If you were to choose to uh, purchase a particular item through those links, a very small portion of that money uh, goes towards the channel and I'll invest that money in the channel to make sure that the quality of the videos and the content that I create for the channel um, is always improving. If you have any other questions about the equipment then please ask in the comments below. If this is the first time to my channel then welcome. If you haven't seen my other videos then please spend some time checking them out. Um, I'm a landscape photographer and I take you on location to, to different places as I shoot landscape images. If you like that content then please consider subscribing so you're updated when I upload my next video and until next time Thanks very much for watching.